much larger world. It is the case today that 80% of the world's population is within cell phone signal range. 80% of the whole world, everyone who's alive today, can reach a cell phone signal. But only 20% of them have ever had an internet experience. The other 60%, nothing, haven't had that digital experience. They may not even have electricity, whatever the case may be. This relates to our strategy about serving the next billion, the next billion consumers out there who are looking for their first digital experience. And it's a remarkably important opportunity to affect society. Let me give you an example of a service that Nokia has introduced and that has some millions of people using it every day today. It's something called Only Life Tools. If you're in rural India and you're a farmer and you buy a Nokia handset, each morning you'll get an SMS, a text message. And it will say, today you should take your crops to this market because it has the best prices relative to the market five kilometers in the opposite direction. It may seem like a remarkably simple example, but because of that, that farm gets just a tiny amount of incremental income for his or her family that they wouldn't have been able to get before. That is life-changing. That is the type of thing that affects societies. When I recently visited China, the leadership of China was thanking Nokia for services that we had introduced to deliver prenatal care information to mothers through their Nokia devices in the rural parts of China, again, reaching millions and millions of people with services like that. But it goes beyond just that type of thing. There are one billion people on this planet, one billion, who have a mobile phone but do not yet have their first bank account. And the opportunity there is to literally take the money they have from under the mattress and get it into a bank account, all managed to deliver by a mobile phone. Thus, in India, our service is called Nokia Money, helping people get their first bank account, manage their money using their mobile device. And don't think about this as fancy apps on devices that are worth hundreds of dollars. We're talking about doing this on devices that are the simplest of technology and can be afforded by some of the poorest people around the world. The impact that Nokia has on people's lives stretches all around the world. You don't see that so much in North America because we are a wealthy society in Canada and the United States. But it is for reasons like this that Nokia is so well known in so many parts of the world. It's why we have so much strength that we can apply to the smartphone challenges that we have. I'll give you a couple more examples. <coughs> Excuse me. In Kenya, half of the children in Kenya are not registered at birth. Today they are registering children, really born children, with no devices. Why does that matter? Because for the half of children in Kenya that weren't registered, they're not eligible for social benefits and they can't vote when they get to voting age. That changes society, changes democracy. In the Philippines, we have a program serving young women, trying to help them get educated so that they can find a better way of life, shifting the social dynamics within that country. Why do we do this? It's good for business. There's no question. This is a profitable business. It's a good thing. I have to say that because we are a publicly held company, and you know, it's very much in our interest to make profit for our shareholders. But I'll tell you, at the core of this company, remember what I said, what do you not want to change? Don't change this. Nokia stands for good. Make sure it's not just about selling the next handset for the next person who walks into the store. Make sure you're changing society, because we've done it before, and we can never lose sight of the importance of that. And so that's one of the things, as a CEO of a company that stands for that, to see those examples in places all over the world, is staggering. Because what it really brings us to is a better, better understanding of Nokia's role in society. I want to show you something here that just gives you a sense of Nokia's impact around the world. In particular, if you take a look at what's going to be coming up here, you're going to see a di diagrammatic representation. Every time one of those little lights comes on, is someone actually using a Nokia device on a particular day. So we get heartbeats from devices. We can tell when devices are used. Every one of those dots is a Nokia device somewhere in the world that, say, today, was actually turned on and used. Now, there's no map drawn on there. There's no map whatsoever. It's just that all those little dots add up to a map of the world, except notably in northern Canada, <laughs> which is off the charge, off the cold. <laughs> and you all know why that is. But the point is, and this is how I want to relate this all the way back to my time here at McMaster. It is the case that as a young
Audi engineer 25 years ago, I had the opportunity here with the McMaster to affect some thousands of people. We connected computers, we changed how research was done. We made it possible for someone in a dorm room to connect to the computer and do their homework from the room. So we had that opportunity. So the impact of an engineer on society, back then it was on tens of thousands of people. That was the potential. But as I think about what is underway in my life today, 25 years later, I can talk about burning platforms, I can announce new strategies with, with Microsoft and all of those things. But the impact is huge of engineering on society. Hundreds of millions of people on this particular day, on that chart you saw, that are affected by this. But beyond just using the device, the fact that we're changing society. So when people say, what's the role of engineering? What is the impact that McMaster can have on society? Well, on one young engineer, it had a pretty big impact. And for that, I'm grateful. Thank you very much.